<laughs> right, so, and, and the reason that that would make sense is you can imagine the dynamics that is about, uh, you, you're finding the condition where your host is growing because you're moving from a base 2 expansion to a base 25 expansion. All right, so this is the Prochlorococcus story, and I, uh, and I wanted to go through this one because it's the most environmentally relevant one, and it'll go back to this, uh, these different sorts of things that happen during transduction. Um, so Prochlorococcus, if you remember, is basically the the bacteria that lives in the open ocean, right? So it can basically live with just air and sunlight and some water. That's about all it takes to make a living. And, um, and so it's like all of these regions where you see low chlorophyll. And Matt Sullivan, uh, when he was a PhD student in uh, Penny Chisholm's lab, uh, spent uh, a long time isolating phage to uh, Prochlorococcus, which took a lot of effort, and um, then came to, um, uh, to my lab when we first moved here to sequence them, right? Basically, they got sequenced at JGI, and then uh, we started doing the analysis. And what's interesting about them is that even though they're open ocean phage, and, um, they basically look like T7 and T7. And he has lambda like ones, and that's true of roseophage and all the other ones in it. So we, for the most part, uh, don't find gigantic differences in morphology. So this looks like T7 not just at the, the structural level, it also looks like T7 at the genomic level. But what's interesting about it is that incorporated into both the T, into all of the cyanophage essentially across the board is that they carry at least one photosynthesis gene, okay? And the photosynthesis gene that they carry is called D1, I'm uh, sorry, PSBA, which is the D1 protein, okay? And the D1 protein sits in PS2, in photosystem 2, okay, right here. And it is the gene that you would be carrying <laughs> if you wanted to keep photosynthesis going. Because this is the most labile part of the system. It's the one that breaks down because of the reaction, so you want to fix it. And so they essentially all of the cyanophage have PSBA in it. And they also often have other photosystem genes. And I'm not going to show you this, but nowadays we know that they also carry PS1, photosystem 1, as a complete cassette in some of these. So this is uh, work done uh, with some of our data by Oded's uh, group. Okay, so it's, and it's very beautiful because there's actually, uh, there's actually a, as you make PS1, um, there's actually a fusion protein that's only in the phage cell. So they've actually fused two of the reaction centers into one protein. Okay. So this is a great story and it's in the lab papers if you'd like to look at it. Is there Steve? any way we can come up with some kind of guess, I guess, when the spiral addiction happened in evolution? Oops. Yeah, it probably at the beginning and yes, we do actually have, so again, um, we've always been peripherally involved, <laughs> so uh, uh, there's a lot of lab papers that have all of this data in it, right, um, even though most of this work was done in, either in the Chisholm lab or in the Dead's lab, I would say would be the main people that have been driving it. Oh, and, uh, and Debbie Lindell, who was in Chisholm's lab and now is at, uh, she's also with Oded at Technion. All right. This is some of, uh, 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 so work that came out, so as soon as you looked at those phage, um, you saw the PSB story and you said, well, this is phage making, uh, uh, taking over photosystems in the, uh, in the bacteria. And while we were uh, screwing around with that, Nick Mann uh, and, uh, and Koki uh, figured this out in Senecococcus and published it. <laughs> so they actually scooped us uh, with uh, finding PSBs in the, the phase genomes. And then, uh, then these stories came out and basically was all over the place. Now what uh, Oded's group has done is that they basically looked through all of the available data um, and found that about 60% uh, of the PSB a genes that you find in the ocean are actually from uh, viruses. So there's actually more virally uh, ones that have gone through the viral fraction 
than ones that have gone through the back, uh, that arose from the original bacteria fraction. Okay? That's a little hard argument to make, but it's actually, if you go through this paper, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that brings up some evolution that I think you guys should think about, because this stuff is pretty smart if you actually think about it. So imagine that you have a gene yeah. stuck in to a, uh, into a virus genome, right? And what this is, this gene is essential for the virus to replicate. Now, if it's moving through the bacteria, it's going to have a certain mutation rate, and it's going to have a lower expansion rate, right, because it's growing in phase two, and it's got lower mutations. So the amount of space that it gets to search in sequence space is lower. than something that's in a virus, which is wor working basically at phase 25, and has about, uh, let's say, a 10 times faster mutation rate. So if you just put this together conservatively, the phage are looking through 100 times more sequence space. So you can imagine that every time that, so you've got this gene and you keep going through this life cycle, okay, they're going to look through a whole bunch of functional space, right? Because if they don't produce it, they're dead. So you don't observe <coughs> those guys, right? And so they keep doing this. And it's not so surprising that more of the diversity will be in this part of it than in the actual microbial part. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So it's really kind of a cool evolutionary mechanism. It may be important for a lot of these genes that we're talking about. Yes? Has anyone looked at if you grow these guys under like low light or some kind of stress, if the efficiency of the PSBA from the viral fraction increases in efficiency? Say that again. So like you grow, you grow these guys under a not ideal conditions, like let's say yeah. low light. Uh -huh. and has anyone looked to see if the PSBA from the viral fraction evolves to become more efficient at capturing less photons, basically? Right, I see. Um, so the question is, do we know anything about the relative efficiencies of the PSBs yeah. um, in viral fraction versus bacterial? I don't. They may have done that, but I don't, I don't know the, the answer to that question. I don't think yeah. that. We do know that, in fact, these studies here have shown um, that they definitely are expressed and that they're important for the cyanophage to reproduce. And we actually knew that before. There were some DCMU studies from uh, much earlier on just cyanophage in general. So we knew photosynthesis was important for the replication of the phage. Okay? But I don't know about the relative ability to grab uh, photons. Yes. So if that logic's true, we should be able to find this happening for almost every important thing exactly. in a cell. And that's probably true in general, that you definitely see expansion of phage genomes in a particular, uh, 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 whatever is expanded in the phage genomes is probably one of the rate-limiting enzymes in the system, or rate-limiting things in the system. Antibiotic resistance and the cystic fibrosis, long mm -hmm. things of that nature. All right, is everybody happy up to this point? And so then, I wanted to put this one in here because this, I think, is really a beautiful study. Uh, this is Rachel Parsons, and she um, uh, has been in Bermuda for a long, long time. <laughs> and uh, she's a research professor out there, and she basically runs um, uh, the day-to-day -day workings of what's called BATS for the Bermuda Ocean Time Series. Okay. And uh, she works with Craig Carlson, who is our DOC person that we work with all the time on the Coral Project. Okay. And uh, what Rachel and, um, and Craig have been doing is uh, taking samples of county viruses and bacteria for a decade, right? which nobody else <laughs> is quite as tough as they are. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, their, their, this, this paper that came out, I guess, uh, this year which is just beautiful because it's actually what happens over time, a, a decade worth of time um, in, uh, the, in the Sargasso Sea. All right, and this is cool. So right here you have the viruses, the number of viruses per mil that they see, okay? And then um, I just run a line down here. So then this is Synecococcus that they're counting and then Prochlorococcus that they're counting. And what you should see, um, is that 
the prochlorococcus and the uh, mm. uh, number of viruses overlap very nicely, actually. So they're like, so this, and it's both in depth and in time, okay? Not the synecococcus so much, mm -hmm. right? Which is interesting. We don't know why this dynamic is happening. There's basically two arguments. One would be that uh, this, this bloom is dying off, and so we see the virus is hopping out, or that we're just seeing a ramp up of uh, microbial activity because of the prochlorococcus of it. So we don't actually know the real cause, but we definitely see this thing. And it's interesting that the synecococcus, we don't see such a Beautiful data set, and this is actually one of my favorite uh, papers recently. It's really good, and uh, incredibly well done. Uh, that's where the anodist filters went. Damn them! <laughs> <laughs> we need to go out to Bermuda. <laughs> 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 Those passwords. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. She's hardcore. You don't mess with Rachel. Has <laughs> anybody that's done this work? <laughs> it's it's crazy, right? I mean, that's just so, amazing. So it, work. Can, it can't just be that you knock down prochlorococcus with the, the viruses and then the synecococcus come up, right? It can't just be one gets goes down and then the competitor comes up. No, it's just the opposite. Because see, here's the synos are are starting. Yeah. So as the upwelling event, oh, is that right? 